uh, workspaces is going through and massive uh, changes massive shifts and we've been on a roller coaster ride these past uh, like you know a uh, year in itself starting from uh, last may uh, march to this march and relapsing into the entire ground zero once again uh, and i'm sure the companies that were just about to begin its processes its back to work spaces the shift in planning and everything that again is taking a rethinking so uh, my first question uh, would be with all these shifts with all these changes that are happening team experts like y'all professionals like professionals like y'all are on the site taking care of every aspect of the execution and the construction and the planning designing with the clients with the corporates uh given this even the facility managers if i'm not mistaken which obviously play a very big role at this point of time so i just uh, wanted to understand uh, from y'all what are some of the critiques that have been taken place in the way projects themselves are being handled uh so anam you want to go first we can probably yeah, take yeah. Uh, others uh, Thank you. Yeah, good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, first of all, to invite me in this panel. It's a pleasure. I think uh, last year we have also spoken a lot about how workspaces are changing due to the pandemic, and whether it's the design or the construction, we have spoken a lot. And uh, okay, while okay. we were discussing all those aspects, suddenly we are now hit by one of the fiercest second wave uh, in the globe. in our own country so we are in the middle of that sure, and sure. we sure, have to sure. climb the peak soon so please take utmost sure, care sure. of yourself and your family and uh, let's uh, as far as work pieces are concerned and shift in its design and construction i think since i manage projects for my clients where i will talk it from that project management level i'm sure the the designers here can talk about okay. more detail about how the design is getting affected but uh, let me talk about mm -hmm. how the projects mm -hmm. are now being happening uh, in an, in this pandemic world first of all the entire project planning and okay. the design okay. is happening online using Correct. technology using online meeting so you know unlike the in the past the architect has to take the brief from the client virtually they are doing their look and feel they are doing their drawing but all is being discussed Correct. online using technology so that's a interesting change from what it was earlier it Correct. was there Correct. earlier Correct. but it has become much more now Correct so i Absol hope that is making all of us more Correct. efficient Correct. Yes. i yeah. hope that it will make all of us efficient and we can you know uh, get more and more uh, uh, expert in doing this online procurement practice sure. in a project has now completely gone online so the e procurement sure. software sure. and everything is being used extensively by all clients and uh, nobody is uh, actually meeting vendors or suppliers to do that what we indians love to do negotiations face to face that is no longer happening it is all okay you know you okay. bid for it you have a e bidding or you whatever you bid becomes your final number and so now you need to be very very clear about okay uh, your numbers and you you can't really look at body language and all that thing so that is also a very sure. very interesting sure. shift sure. happening in the construction uh, industry i just wanted to understand this entire new process how efficient has it been and how in comparison to the this which or way which method did you you and your team and the industry feels been better for them as such how efficient has the system been for you all hey i think because of the as far as the procurement is concerned it has become definitely become more efficient you know you are you are basically vetting your bill of quantities okay. and once that is vetted it goes to the pre qualified uh, vendors or suppliers they are giving their quote everything happens correct like a uh, automated process so there is not too much of uh, to and fro happening which used to happen earlier so that's definitely uh, okay. better okay. than what it was earlier but the disadvantage is that right. the procurement team is only looking at numbers they are not really meeting the vendors or right. understanding okay. whether somebody is more keen or less keen because that also matters uh, sometimes so the information Absolutely. whatever they are gathering that is becoming crucial 
Okay. So I don't All know. Right. In the okay. future, maybe we will have a rating system like what a Uber or a Ola has. Uh, I'm sure as <laughs> more and more data comes to an organization, they can start rating the vendors, and based on that, their uh, you know bid will be evaluated. No, no. The last point that you were mentioning before, I had uh, questioned you about this. Uh, that hence. That's the procurement. As far as construction is concerned, I think everybody is becoming more planned. They are doing the work. Uh, more uh, meticulously they are deciding how many crane needs to be brought labor everything is being planned in a much better way than it was earlier there are okay. no more chaotic site situations that we have seen earlier okay so that's the uh, good thing the pandemic okay. as we keep on saying that it's a very good teacher it is right. teaching us a lot of things okay hopefully will help us Sure, sure. So the labor force are being now procured optimally. Nobody wants to just procure labor. They are, they Absolutely. want to be very clear how many labor is required for a project, from where they are coming, where will they be staying, how will they be you know kept protected. Big construction Absolutely. sites are becoming like uh, they they are being planned like bubbles now. Okay. Okay. In IPL. a large construction site actually can be designed and planned like a bubble to ensure that you know the risk is uh, minimum for the people right. who are working there okay right. and apart from that virtual reporting is becoming a trend in the sense a lot of clients are asking for it okay in the sense um, there are softwares or cameras specialized cameras through which uh-huh. we can actually do a virtual tour of the site okay along okay. with Perfect. the client and the designers <laughs> which earlier used to happen physically uh, a site okay. walk through so okay. the project manager or a project engineer just have to fix his camera in his helmet and he walks down the site and the architect mm-hmm. can ask him to stop somewhere look at the uh, what is being constructed correct his uh, drawing the the autocad or the revit drawing can be place parallel to that physical uh, walk through so okay. basically uh, i can this is possible now you you can actually all right look at the site setting from your home and decide whether this is right or wrong or accordingly instruct okay. the site team to make the changes and the client also right. because okay. a lot of these mnc's are not allowing their employees to go out they need mm-hmm. this tool now to basically check what is happening on a site level because end of the day oh. they are investing uh, on these projects right so they definitely need to know I, what I, is happening on a site level which now they are not able to do. so these are the uh, sure. main paradigm shifts which are happening in the thing into uh, the projects. construction project uh, prashant i just wanted to understand this a lot of automation a lot of technology inputs that anup said has gone into the procurement uh, part of it optimizing the labor sourcing everything uh, of what i know uh, edifice obviously handles major vast clients and corporates and uh, i know you all also shifted to bim quite early in its stages so i just wanted to yeah, understand yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of what the walk throughs that arnab is talking about is also possible through bim and revit is something that uh, edifice has taken up hands down so i just wanted to understand how are you all handling these uh, shifts to what are you all doing with your the scale of projects that you all are handling also so uh, firstly thanks for having me rashmi sure uh, thank you so, thank you so much uh, you know <clears throat> i think that's a very interesting question in terms of you know i think this current uh, you know the covid restrictions you know they have actually accelerated the entire demand for digital solutions and digital transformations and uh, you know okay. uh, you know it's 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 more important that companies provide a very safe working environment for their employees and, and you know uh, it, not just during how when you are building the office but during the construction stage as well uh, absolutely you know apart from just uh, doing the projects in bim uh, mm-hmm. some of the projects which we are doing for our mnc clients you know uh, as rightly pointed out by arnab you know uh, there have been cameras placed across various key points at the locations given by us you know uh, okay. specific locations okay. given by us in the layout plan where we want to continuously monitor and program how the Mon- construction is happening uh, okay. the sequence of the construction is happening and okay. uh, 
you know uh, that is a key thing which is happening as rightly mentioned by arnab all right and uh, so uh, the project managers and the facilities teams of the clients they keep on sharing these video with, videos with us you know okay, not okay. necessarily just have a meeting weekly but they keep uploading these videos okay. and uh, you know uh, our team is easily able to you know uh, point out you know if if there are if there are any errors or mistakes happening so we okay. can take care of the, them Okay. Okay. And uh, you know, e- even in the midst of these uh, pandemic, I think, uh, you know, our, our we have our site teams which are visiting the site at least once a week. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's difficult, but we have ensured that uh, you know that we are following that practice and to ensure that you know uh, we have the end product as we want. That's amazing. Uh, and you know, as you rightly said, uh, you know, BIM is helping a lot. Uh, you know, uh, we had we had uh, migrated to BIM platform. almost uh, very early when it came to india mm-hmm. and uh, almost mm-hmm. uh, 90% of projects are at bim so uh, whatever drawings we are delivering you know um, it's helping us a lot in 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 terms of that you know uh, the the coordination with mep aspects of the project uh, mm-hmm. they seem to be very well uh, very well taken care of when we are releasing the gfcs from bim and okay. uh, we have seen the effect of it when we are you know uh, there are very less rfis coming from the uh project managers and stuff like that so that mm. is helping a lot hmm that's so uh, that's interesting that, uh, in fact i know how much uh, bim has actually uh, helped the entire construction industry through this pro- particular process of the pandemic as such so i just wanted to understand a form that's using it vastly how it went about uh shivani meena any of you like uh, you all want to uh, chip in meena please yes sure absolutely okay. see i'll tell you we are in our, our form in research we deal with um, small up to like say 1000 to 30000 square feet of uh, office spaces that's what mm-hmm. we do that the uh, spectrum that we work inside okay. and um, see as architects uh, you know we have to approach projects i mean i'm talking of the post pandemic uh, situation that we have to approach projects not just as you know problems to be solved with uh, say steel concrete and glass but you know more as social problems and that sure. need um, you know they need wider and more holistic solutions so sure. when we are you know connecting with the end users we are actually connecting with them and their peers okay right okay. now be it say environmental financial or social so okay. when we talk of new projects these days uh, mm-hmm. the question that arises is uh, what do i make that's obviously that's always been there but it's also become when do i make and how much do i make and uh-huh. also what if i need to change this after a certain period of time Hmm. okay because there is okay. so much uncertainty that hangs in the air that people are worried what if i'm not able to sustain this in the longer period i want to do this i am going to do this so you okay. know this is something that you know came to us and we were like literally forced to think of a new way of approaching projects and okay. with all of us you know stuck indoors the spirit has been kind of a little theoretical and phys- philosophical for uh, you know all <laughs> of us <laughs> made us do a lot of rethink and we realized yes we are accountable you know that accountability has increased Absolutely. so for all our workplace design projects right now you know we give two versions of the same plan the final plan has two versions of it okay, okay. so one yeah one with say personal and minimal requirements uh, for immediate execution and okay. one maximum working capacity just in case the premise has to be leased out later or maybe you uh, think of expanding and you bring in more uh, staff later on so okay. the, the clock can go this way or that way <laughs> okay. and so to me we are doing a plan a and a plan b and b okay <laughs> that's so, so that is something that we are doing so um yeah i think all in all i think Uh, you will hear this from me coming too often now because that you know we have to be a little more sensitive towards when somebody comes to us with an issue you need to understand the fears that they are coming with and you need to yeah. um, you know put them at ease also so the flexibility needs to be uh, offered yeah. at your end from the Absolutely. designers end to put them at uh, rest you know, i understand it's, it's a financial thing also you don't know you know what you're going to invest what you're going to return and you know how it's going to pan out so you need to be answerable to all these things so most of the offices that we are doing right now all of them have the same requirements of plan a which they were like okay. to do right now and what if say, in 6 months or 1 year down the line the uh, you know thing meter swings either ways so <laughs> okay it, yeah, yeah it's a fun thing <laughs> <laughs> no that's uh, that's uh, even i've uh, like for me it's uh, news actually that 
like the design community is going out of the this to actually uh, accommodate these kind of uh, flexibility and this kind of extra like you know going beyond what their deliverables are as such that's amazing meena shivani uh, you uh, like would want to contribute anything particular to this yes uh, basically we do a lot of artworks and we do you know the skilled uh, skilled uh, requirements on a site so most of our work is actually done on uh, the installation is done on site so what we have tried to do is find local vendors who can support us we that's absolutely we do true. not take our team from place to place right now we are trying okay. to find local people who can support us work with us understand us but what has gone up immensely is of course communication because everything now is written down you have to write absolutely. in your whatsapp messaging you have yeah. to write in zoom calls you have to write yeah. in your planning so the yeah. amount of communication you are doing through mm. the digital medium is enormous and i think you that needs to be emphasize that it is a very important to have that kind of communication because without that things are likely to go wrong so after aspects where uh, I, i just feel empathy is very important at this stage clients should not be expecting you know deadlines and the way it was and you know one will have to uh, you know show flexibility whether i show flexibility to my suppliers and supply partners or my clients show flexibility towards me think that that is something that i need to emphasize and build contingency for in my plan absolutely so absolutely yeah. uh, uh, the <laughs> one question i wanted to answer is uh, ask actually is uh, so uh, uh, industry like ours uh, the people who are at site executing a site especially even uh, shibani you mentioned you worked with a lot work with a lot of artists right maybe they might be uh, carigars they would be uh, yeah. skill laborers like you mentioned now uh, explaining yeah. the process down to them uh, see i uh, like someone like uh, arna bor like call yours and even edifice they have several uh, layers i don't know how uh, correct me if i'm wrong or if i'm mistaken uh, prashant or arna you all have several layers you all have your uh, project heads your team leads your project managers and then it trickles down to the site uh, communication but shivani someone like you who is directly in uh, what do you say contact or in direct understanding of how the site labors need to execute the this or even arnab and prashad i don't know how uh, the process at your end works but how does that uh, communication that process work for you guys is it uh, as uh, easy and as feasible and efficient as going down to the site explaining because obviously there's a big lag right now but uh, given how mistakes happen because i'll tell you what there was recently in hyderabad the project uh, of one of the biggest uh, tech companies in uh, india actually the campus the third campus is coming up here and the site had a massive fire uh, incident there and they obviously try to cover it up as much as possible but we kind of in the industry understood the trickle down and that was because uh, the leads weren't there the uh, team heads weren't there to overlook or supervise the this it was mainly the construction workers the site workers that was there so the fire incident happened and obviously it was escalated at a very higher level because the uh, floor above and below was still functional and working so the building went under a uh, complete uh, mm-hmm. shutdown after this so these kind of incidents these kind of uh, nuances that happen on site how are these things handled be it understanding uh, giving your design uh, explanations to them the implications of it the executions how is that being handled at the at your end like it probably comes to my uh, second question that what are the learnings that you all have had from this particular uh, period of time as such so yeah anyone can take it and anyone see this the site incidents like this uh, earlier used to happen uh, a lot i think but okay. i would i must say that over the last 10 years the ehs awareness in large site has increased exponentially okay so okay it, it is to do with the client's awareness as well as the you know it, it boils down to that how much you value human lives in our country so okay. i i i i am quite optimistic that it is becoming better every day and i could see it because uh, i could see the difference and it's not only about the client and the project management firm it's even the vendors the mm-hmm. big vendors or the big contractors they have also realized that this is a differentiator for them to bag a contract mm-hmm. if they are not doing enough for their workforce making okay. sure okay. their sites are uh, you know safe 
they have the right compliance in check they have an ambulance available and this pandemic has accelerated right they have to take care of their workforce they cannot treat them like they are invisible it's not a invisible mm-hmm. workforce it's a mm-hmm. uh, you know real human beings are in uh, hundreds are working in a site and building that uh, edifice mm-hmm. so my point is uh, it is becoming better and okay. whenever a such an incident happen as a process as a protocol what we need to do is to immediately inform the client and also mm-hmm. do a root cause analysis that why has it happened make sure mm-hmm. there is a you know toolbox meeting where we call all the uh, the yes, that did happen tell them what Absolutely. has happened tell them if it's a fault of and highlight if there is a you know lapse in the safety guidelines which has caused this accident because it is important to tell them so that they are more aware next time so that's mm-hmm. the way you can keep on minimizing this but yes mm-hmm. uh, full fetch ess ehs protocol at a site is extremely important Oh, and right, okay. i i am sure that every stakeholder has realized it now all right okay uh this is from the safety perspective uh, prashant meena shibani you all can probably uh, tell me about how your uh, design communication happens because obviously there are so many times when we are visiting the site there are still such massive uh, errors that can happen there are things that can go wrong alignments that can be mistaken but uh, given that we are working away how are you all handling your uh, design communication with the site team as such it actually changes from uh, depends on the scale of the project that you know you're working on so for okay. instance uh, the larger projects they are pretty much streamlined okay even the workers who are there are you know they there is there is a hierarchy that you know is followed it's not the labor who comes onto the site directly there are you know many more people you know uh, communicating with them okay Absolutely. there's a chain of people now Correct. the trick happens when you're doing the smaller projects because in okay. order to cut the cost it's usually there's one contractor and the labor and that's it okay mm-hmm. and the contractor also because of the pandemic will not go to the site will just talk over the phone absolutely so, yeah so it becomes quite chaotic at times for the smaller projects so absolutely. you know we just um, so the labor you have to think from their perspective okay so what is mm. it that they will understand they need to show us something physically on site and ask us a question okay it they mm. half of them you won't understand in the low the smaller projects they, these guys won't even know how to read a drawing most of them absolutely okay? it's completely so you just go, you, you tell them they, they know their job but they can't read a drawing there's hardly any technical education that's a requirement or a prerequisite to become a worker in this industry and that's one of the main issues that we have totally agree on that yeah. yes so um so what happens is we tell them to make a video call a whatsapp video call okay <laughs> okay and <laughs> okay. basic as that because they all of them know how to operate whatsapp and do whatsapp video calls because they talk to their families every day absolutely okay. yeah so hmm. that is something that they understand so we tell them go to the site make a video call and then ask us the question and okay. this is how we explain it to them and once okay. we explain it to them then we send them pictures and more drawings and 3d so 3d's work with them okay. this is all in the case that you know you have to keep the work going and there is no say site supervisor there this is for those trickier you know situations Mm-hmm. Under normal circumstances, these things never arise. You know, that you always have a chain in place, and you go to the site regularly, and uh, so on and so forth. So, right now, the situation that we are in, we need to be super flexible and super adapting. Okay, Absolutely. so you can't say this is the right way to do it, and that's a proper way to do it. You just have Correct. to do it. Okay, whatever <laughs> <it> works, <laughs> just <laughs> get works. done with it. so this is one thing of course as far as the workers are concerned the other um, key learnings that i would say this is of course this is on site execution and our uh, problems there are like there are many more phases to it actually this issue i mean we feel look deeper into it there is something called accountability which uh, right now we don't give to our workers so it's very difficult for us to ask uh, for their accountability in return you understand absolutely they have their bad days and there's nobody to feed them on their bad days okay absolutely so when you ask them to you know finish the work on a certain date or a timeline they're not bound to do it they are the one you know one uh, you know uh, saying they you know the thing news that comes in there might be a lockdown they'll run they'll just you know <laughs> they won't be <laughs> okay <laughs> it is total mayhem i mean uh, but i totally sympathize with them and i can uh, imagine yeah who is to pay for them you know that's the thing and who is going to pay for their stay here without any work yeah. 
so that is something that is causing a lot of trouble in the mid and the smaller segment uh, project segment projects okay okay yeah so this this uh, uh, so, migration that we see and uh, yeah that's as far as the execution is comes and of course beyond execution in our office working and in our dealing with clients there are lots many more you know key learnings that we look at for instance uh. um people are totally afraid of the built environment right now they don't want to be indoors with sitting Absolutely. with people and talking okay so they just want to be out so how do you handle that fear you know how do you make any space feel very welcoming okay good, so that's the challenge that we face across all typologies okay, okay. okay. so so we we are looking at uh, you know more of more about say building health uh, these sure. days than the aspects sure. building health comes um, to the fore we look at indoor mm. air quality fresh air intake uh, sure. incorporating all those things so there are you know sure sure in fact things. that factor is another question that i'm coming to the built space in itself that uh, how we are changing but i'll just finish up this uh, question sure. first and probably we can move on to how the interior space in itself is being dealt with shibani you wanted to uh, mention something on to the prior question that we yeah. uh, had Uh, i would say that uh, we are we are monitoring the heck out of uh, our project sites so we ask <laughs> okay. for uh, updates almost daily basis uh, work in progress pictures uh, but okay. at the same time we're trying to see if the workers can actually stay on site get food in the evenings um, you know even these are the actual challenges problem. at ground level so like at ground you, level yeah it has to go hand in hand yeah you Absolutely. can't just demand and you know things will happen you have to also make it a little easier for sure, people sure, to sure. operate right now sure sure uh, prashant you want to see how your firm is going about the entire uh, site monitoring i mean That's i understand cool. you <laughs> mentioned about the cameras but even uh, you understanding the part i'm talking about right when your design yeah, so is getting, uh, getting uh, explained and ex- yeah I think, as you have rightly mentioned, you know, um, we have many layers of how how the project is handled. You know, like Absolutely. right from the vertical heads, the project heads. Uh, pe- uh, there are two, three uh, layers at site as well, and then we have sure. a, a team which purely is the site engineers. You know, who, who are visiting sites uh, per week, and uh, you know, uh, I would say that uh, you know, uh, honestly, the project managers are doing a fantastic job. Uh, correct in, in all of in 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 the last entire year throughout the pandemic you know we we have delivered almost like uh, you know more than a uh, million square feet of sites you know uh, okay. during this pandemic and you know one of the key players which has helped to ensure this delivery have been the project managers you know they have ensured that you know all the team members you know not just their team members but the people who are working on site our teams everyone is taken care of in terms of you know social distancing how the work is uh, you know taken care of you know how how to schedule the activities and all you know in, okay. in some of our major larger sites you know they have set mm-hmm. up camps mm-hmm. where you know if if it's a 10 floor building you know the top two or top three floors are set up as labor camps okay. so you know the okay. client has agreed that those two three floors will be delivered at a later date mm-hmm. so many oh. precautions have been taken you know so i think uh, that has worked very well and uh, okay. some of the major players all the major mncs throughout the pandemic i can tell you that you know in fact for the last one year we have uh, so many sites have been executed in spite of the pandemic and uh, that okay. is because you know so many precautions have been taken you know you know but one very interesting thing which i wanted to you know <clears throat> talk about you know how you know what are the changes happening and what what have what have been the learnings in terms Absolutely. of design Correct, correct. Not just the you know the site works, but uh, you know COVID has brought in so many ch- changes, and you know some of them are definitely here to stay. Okay, Absolutely, they are not going away. Uh, no, Absolutely, uh, we are designing Come. for major of the MNCs right now. You know uh, what we have been communicating with them, and what we have learned is you know office is no no more going to be just a place of work. Okay, office is okay. going to be a place for collaboration. Okay, okay. When, when we go in the future, uh-huh. it is not going to be. Uh, a nine to six office, or you know, for how many for how many hours people are working? Absolutely, it will be a space where people dip in and dip out. Okay, and, you know that space will have to resemble that okay. environment. Okay, okay, so you know, as we go, as we are going to design future offices, you know, uh-huh. the trend is going to be of uh, flexible schedules and hybrid offices. So okay. uh, there will be few people who would want to you know go to office. Few people mm-hmm. who want to work from home. 
and uh, you know this this means that the businesses will need to reimagine offices you know Correct. and ensure Correct. that the office spaces are not just for individual works but they are for mm-hmm. learning they are for collaboration and they are for culture building okay absolutely so if, okay if you look at all the offices which we are designing now which mm-hmm. are you know there are some offices we are which we are designing which are pretty large which are going to get executed by 2022 you know okay uh, okay you know, what we are what we are doing for them you know primarily uh-huh. the office is a culture space you know wherein uh, you know it, 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 uh, the office will act as a social anchor you know facilitating connections you know fostering okay. unscripted collaboration and stuff like that so you know okay the, right. i think the key word is flexibility when we are going to do the future offices you know okay and, you know one of the most important thing is you know some people might be saying that you know though there is this is the death of office but this is not going to happen okay because okay. we we all like to interact with people <laughs> no that's like absolutely true yeah and yeah, yeah. Uh, technology is a long way to you know handle that you know Completely studies have true. shown that you know infrequent uh, person to person communications you know it fosters commitment it fosters team growth you absolutely. know some people have want to meet together over tea coffee and you know discuss not just projects but you know what what is happening in their lives Correct. so you know um, what we have come across when we are uh, designing these offices uh, for major of the mncs uh-huh. is uh, you know the, the the floor plan is changing a lot uh, uh, the, the office yes. is going to be a hybrid office and yes. uh, they they are going to look totally different and uh, you know so it, it's going to be an, it's it's an exciting thing what is happening is what i want to say uh i just wanted to delve in a little deeper into this you gave me a, uh, gave me a generic uh, idea about how the uh, but i want to go space wise the zoning wise so see uh 2010 2000 uh, like this past decade kind of saw the influx of like you know the google office culture right where we had a lot of recreational spaces coming in informal spaces and cafes and everything that was infused in but now like you said offices are going to be more about collaboration and we never know it's going to be more about audio visual communication so i just wanted to understand in the office within the floor plate the plate of the office in itself uh the planning in itself does that see any changes in its zoning are the workstations being reduced are the audio video uh, cabins <coughs> being increased is there any such particular changes that has been uh, going on in the industry arna maybe probably you can uh, chip in on to this particular factor as such the thing is i just want to get into a little bit of detail as to the planning itself how is it how, how is that changing so do you see any changes in that the changes were happening even before the pandemic in a certain okay. way okay okay so the cabins were vanishing absolutely you know? yeah yeah we 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 don't have correct. any more cabins now in our office correct correct and yeah. what we have is a meeting space the work space and the collab space correct. plus the okay. other functional spaces but what this pandemic has done is i feel now you know any organization today will be looking at de-densifying their office space so no longer that big uh, rush towards how many head counts you know that's the architect's nightmare the <laughs> client just <laughs> wants the head count and nothing else correct so, correct uh, so that will stop so people mm. now would like to use their office space as a, as prashant said as a space where people come in they they <laughs> they get imbibed with the organization culture they they collaborate whatever physical social interaction which mm-hmm. is important for team building uh, leadership everything that is what the office space would become correct so it is no correct. longer that you have to fit in 100 people because you now you can fit in 200 people also if half of them are not working okay. every day in that same okay. space so if you go by that hybrid model and where everybody doesn't need to come every day okay and if you plan your attendance of your employee using some software You, mm-hmm. you don't really need that much of space anymore but completely agree already have that space right you already are uh, invested in it and you have that space so how can you make that space work for you now so mm-hmm. that's why the densification making your office much more premium than what it was okay. so that okay. it attract employees it it becomes a kind of a magnet for talent you know you you Absolutely. you look at your uh, uh, employee base and see what actually will make them feel good when they come to an office and office. you design according okay prashant you have anything to say as to uh, the factors as to how planning or zoning in itself and yeah, I, also i, I just I, wanted to uh, even if you can comment on the i know one, arnab just more, mentioned one more thing just before prashant says that is 
another trend which i anticipate is that earlier this big you know obsession with security using access uh-huh. control doors i think that will reduce whatever oh, security okay. you need to do you should uh-huh. be able to do it easily with your cameras you don't okay. really need to have doors Face where you are uh, you okay. are you're stopping somebody to enter a certain zone okay and okay this is all the more important because new organization there will be a lot of collaboration between people inside the organization and outside the organization okay so okay. you can't really you know make your space very enclosed you know okay. inward looking you okay. need to be able to invite your visitors or your collaborator inside your workspace and Come. make them part of the you know collaboration because that's the only way you can succeed in the new age correct adding on to my previous question prashant i just also wanted to understand uh, he mentioned uh, mr anna mentioned about how cabins have been reduced obviously that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, like you know the age of open play, uh, open floor offices that we were seeing but that also has been undergoing massive debate of late i don't know if you guys have uh, i mean uh, read through it but there were several articles coming up even in new york times or washington post about how open plan offices are not not working anymore i just wanted to understand uh, how is that reflecting into the indian subcontinent for us for our clients is that actually true and given with the uh, onset of <laughs> covid which obviously negated the entire open plan this is there changes in these kind of uh, aspects of office design like anyone can answer yeah. prashant you want so <clears throat> rashmi you know um, i to carry forward what uh, arnav was mentioning you know this uh, if you look at how this whole transformation has been you know uh, one of the key important things learnings is you know remote working is doable you know that okay. that is the biggest thing because of Absolutely. technology uh, companies have realized that they can work from home uh, so Absolutely. Uh, you know whenever hopefully the the pandemic is over uh, mm-hmm. they would want to ensure that you know if they would want to give that flexibility to their people that if they want to work from home you can work from home because they have okay. seen that they okay. are getting the results they are still make, mm. able to make the profits you know you, you have seen you must have read, read about all the big five tech companies you know they have told their employees that you can work from home forever from absolutely <laughs> exactly so, yeah 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 and uh, you know as far as your question goes specifically uh, some of the mnc's which you are working for uh they they are coming with millions of free projects okay i'm sure arnab is aware about them all the large mnc's uh mm-hmm. they are they are planning their offices for 2023 2025 okay five years okay. from right okay. and i can tell you all of them are open offices what happens okay. is uh okay. you know the, the from where they are coming you know uh, they 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 always believe in a very inclusive and diverse culture they, okay they, you know one of the recent offices which we have done which is a uh, there are 9000 workstations and there is no okay. cabin okay? okay there is no cabin okay. at all uh, e- even the ceo is sitting in one corner on a workstation on the you know in one of the floors that's how okay. much there is uh, you know how much there is inclusivity and transparency and diversity that's that's, okay. that's what you know the key things which the hr is looking into when when you're talking about the mncs Absolutely. and you know as as i mentioned when when you're talking about a hybrid office you know when you're talking about a, a floor space where we are going to ensure you know even 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 when the pandemic gets over mm-hmm. you know everyone is going to be super cautious you know we are not going to make people sit by side by side you know very often we are going to take care of physical dis- distancing so what okay. is going to happen is we are going to end up having a very uh, hybrid office we, we will have an open plan office but more of collapsed spaces and okay. more of and it's definitely going to be a space where you know just to give an example when we thought that you know this first wave is getting over you know so yeah. you know uh, we we started going to office in november <laughs> okay. you know sept october november i started going to office in, in oh, okay and okay for the for the two three months you know we went to office and mm-hmm. we used we particularly used to call our teammates you know only when we want to have a you know a brainstorming session or we want to you know select materials okay you know, okay uh, hmm. and then you know, we we only used to call them then otherwise you know they were free to to pick up some and i think yeah. that's what is going to be the trend you know okay so, okay Okay, uh, Meena Shivani, you, uh, you guys, yeah, yeah, Meena. So, um, you know, till last year, the kind of predictions we were making were all very different, and uh, suddenly this year they've all kind of uh, turned on their heads. So, one thing we realize, and all our clients also told us, is that you know, 
See, work from home is a luxury. It is not something that you want to give to everyone. Why? Okay. Because if you were to work from home, then you mm -hmm. have to uh, have, say, a good uh, internet bandwidth, which not everybody, you know, can access. You have to have a house wherein there are, you know, less distractions that you're getting. You can afford to have a room to yourself, okay? Correct. Where Correct. you're not disturbed. Now, this is not something that everyone has access to. Okay, mm -hmm, people mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. all strata, this is not something that they can. So you cannot force people to work from home. Sometimes it's too disturbing for them to be working from home. There are people who know you have to answer so many things at home and they are not able to follow a schedule. And then the work stress is going up like crazy for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. So it is probably some, um, say, industries like IT industry, probably, you know, they are able to uh, take to this very easily. But it's not uh, a solution for all of them. I can, uh, yeah, so, completely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it totally depends on what industry you're from and what what are your work requirements and that tells you what kind of office you want whether you want an office what kind of an office you want so most of the offices that we are doing now are yes they are hybrid um mm. if it is an industry where you need some sort of a privacy for your conversations okay mm. at the uh, ceo level then mm. yes we give them cabins but otherwise even um, you know for us in our office we don't have cabins we have an open plan seating so we it's very easy to collaborate when it's an open plan you know you can talk to everybody there's Correct. no little, there's no wall between you and the next person so Correct. it's efficient but it depends on the industry that we are talking about and designing for that is something but say so having said that you know what we what change we are observing is that people are not requiring too many fixed workstations nowadays All so right, okay. the plan could be flexible so you might have a cafeteria kind of a setup you might have a so what we do is we give them a high table there so okay. it could also function as say standing uh, workstations so people go take their laptop stand and work there which is good for them um, during the lunch hour they can have lunch or a cup of coffee there that's something they do the other main change that we are observing in all the offices is the um, inflow of something called a lounge, uh, a business lounge. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, they say it's okay even if we have a workstation by the, say, wall, like a home office setup. But okay. in the senior cabin, you have a workstation like that and you have a lounge. So okay. the senior cabin itself has turned into a lounge more yeah. than a uh, no, say a boss chair with three visitor chairs in front of it you know that has a, a crazy hierarchy to it it says this is my office and you are the visitor so mm -hmm. people don't want to you know talk to people like that uh, you know they want to talk in a more relaxed environment so the lounge is making a huge comeback everyone mm -hmm. who's coming to us now they all want like a big business lounge instead of a cabin cabin okay okay, okay. so it's, it. it's an extension so it's like almost like a home office setup plus a cabin, oh, cabin. Oh, okay sorry, plus a lounge so that is something that uh, you know we are doing and noticing yeah, yeah noticing and it works people come to us and they say it works really well you know when you uh, have a client whom you want to talk about like a okay. really good client so mm -hmm. talking to them in a lounge is more like you're talking as equals as opposed to you know, sitting over I a can, and with the chairman. Uh, absolutely. So. That informality had already seeped into yes. the uh, professional absolutely. environment. That is plus, absolutely. Plus, there's another thing. I mean, now, whoever has to go to the office, you know, you go with some sort of a skepticism in your head, you know, oh my God, should I go to the office or not? Should I go there or not? So, you know, our offices, they are literally now having to take a leaf out of residential design. You know, instead of healthcare design, it's going towards residential because they may want to make it really warm and inviting. And okay. you, know, you want to make people, um, you know, you want to put them at ease, mental ease when they mm -hmm. are coming there. And so you offer them a cup of coffee, there's a coffee machine, everything. So it's it's a very chilled out environment people are preferring to have okay. in the office as opposed okay. to very formal and scary stayed looking uh, Okay, that, that's actually pretty interesting because I'd always seen, like I realized, healthcare industry was suddenly majorly taking cues from the hospitality industry. The hotel and uh, designs was <laughs> seeing so vehemently and all uh, office sector was seeing a lot of intake from the healthcare industry, like, you know, be it uh, the designs and everything. It, so it was 
till last year that's what i'm saying there's a big shift from last year last year everyone Absolutely. thought that's the way to go okay yeah, and yeah, yeah. there is this pandemic fatigue which has set in and you know Absolutely. people are like no 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 we don't now healthcare especially in the current situation we are in healthcare is scaring people off like <laughs> <laughs> that last place you want to go so okay. you want your offices you want why do people who want, want to go back to their offices so that there is literally sanity in their life okay absolutely you don't have to handle 10 different things at the same time also five different people at the same time absolutely so they want to go to the office relax and cut off and just concentrate on their work i so can imagine it's kind of taken on a different meaning people go there to relax and then relax. just you think of it in one track okay i have to work and that's that Correct. that's when the change is happening Correct. Uh, Shivani, I just wanted to uh, Anub and Prashant mentioned about the zoning and the generic flow plan of the, this. Uh, Meena mentioned more about the design aspects of how the workspaces sector. You are more involved with the decor and the detailing of a workspace, like be it with the art forms or anything. So, how are you seeing these this particular aspect changing into the sector as such? For our own workspace, we are actually working with a lot of uh, technology tools. For for example, we have Zoho Soft. to look at productivity how people are using their time from hour to hour they they meant to key in these details so that we can keep track of that okay in our customer spaces we are seeing a slight sh- shift towards sustainability towards sustainable living we are seeing some interest in having plants in opening up windows and having large windows uh, mm. you know bringing the open air in uh, keeping the acs off we are seeing those sort of things happening with our customers so we try to keep our interiors uh, you know airy uh, give them a feeling of space give them a feeling of light and nature coming in as much as okay. we can in our hands so okay that okay. is one shift that i'm definitely seeing <clears throat> in pocket yeah. that's very nice Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right, and, and that's, that's I true. totally agree yeah. with that. Actually, that's that's a major shift. You know, uh, biophilic mm-hmm. design it's making such a huge, ca- you know, presence. Uh, you know, felt both be it in interiors or be it architecture in all the projects that we do. So okay. and sustainability, sustainability, as I said, you know, so everyone wants to you know that okay, AC ke bina, you know, it should work. You know, just mm-hmm. let us open the windows, let us have lots of plants inside, and uh, you know, so we have. Uh, fans and stuff in, installed in places where they say, you know, we don't want to be in air-conditioned spaces all the time. So mm-hmm. yes, uh, Shivani is. I mean, she's absolutely right that uh, it's, it's another major thing that we are doing right that's, now. That's that's true. Anam, I just have an uh, one more question from you. So uh, they mentioned they very rightly uh, touched upon the topic of uh, sustainability and how tech is being integrated into the spaces. Uh, we've seen obviously there's major tech se- sensors, building management systems that have come into place to understand the performance of a structure and building in itself, right? And we know a vast data. is being connected uh, like you know through various sensor points and all these things but i just wanted to understand are these datas that is being con- uh, collected being translated into how design can be made or interpreted on how design could be shifted uh, prashant i just you know what i understand as an architectural firm do you all refer to uh, any particular data of to as to how spaces are being utilized or how uh, certain areas are being uh, like you know can be optimized from these different i mean obviously you all might be having repetitive clients and they might understand uh, from their previous offices how spaces are worked how which what hasn't worked and what that what has worked so uh, anna i want to understand from you first like uh, you're obviously into building management you're uh, handling even design and build you're obviously even into uh, tech integration within structures so how has this amplified in this particular scenario as such i think bms um, as a as a as a package it has a lot of potential i still feel it is not yet totally utilized by the occupiers totally agree. Completely, agree. Yeah. completely agree yeah okay yeah. there's a lot of thing that can be done if mm-hmm. you really design a proper bms system it is uh, i think it is becoming better than what i saw 10 years back when a uh, mnc will invest quite a lot of capital on bms and then his facility team is unable to understand what that system can generate for them exactly But today i think uh, i think bms is going to go places in the sense that in this age of data driven design mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. data is very important for all architects but architects does that data translate 
designers traditionally has dependent on let's say the mep designer will depend on the climate data or other data architect will definitely look at the orientation of the building the how much sunlight is coming in Absolutely. all that aspect are part and parcel of designing a office okay. but if you have historical data about mm-hmm. a certain flow plate where things have happened this way or you are when you're designing your electrical panel or your air conditioning these data helps you to make it better instead of just copy pasting the design so so th- you are telling me these this data is actually being referred to uh, it's actually being analyzed studied and they're, interpreted they're, into they're, they're not being referred to because the data is limited to that facility team there is no proper study or uh, proper um, uh, you know um, uh, collation of this data and shared with the design community even let's take a, a indian mnc like a tcs or wipro or infosys mm-hmm. and if you look mm-hmm. at all their footprint across the country and they are it companies they yeah. are the right yeah. companies to actually <laughs> quickly get this data and make something out of it correct yeah. in fact i would say microsoft has done some initiative in this uh, space they are okay. actually okay. understand that a building actually uh, can generate a lot of data points and you can if you are smart enough to use that data you can make your work exactly. much better exactly right? exactly but it, it doesn't mean that you have to collect 100 data you need to also know out of that 100 which are the five which is more important absolutely absolutely and uh, you know focus on them mm-hmm. and i'm sure prashant team will be very happy to know if if uh, somebody can tell them okay this is the way the the air flow is in a office plate mm-hmm. uh, based on this kind of a air conditioning system correct, so next correct. time when they design that office they will understand and will not go for that or might go for a better alternative absolutely and as absolutely. Uh, meena was saying that um, this fear of air conditioning which has come thanks to the <laughs> pandemic <laughs> yeah it's good it's good for the planet <laughs> i i am sure it will push the designers to now think of uh, what our uh, uh, you know in, uh, people have done you know, how can you make a building comfortable without having air conditioning i have air conditioning yeah and yeah it's yeah, possible that's... not that it's not possible but it starts from the building you can't do that after the building is built absolutely absolutely history that's seen the it orientation of the building exactly yeah. exactly um, see even a lot of buildings around the world i mean if you look at um, apple's um, second campus you know so uh-huh. uh, poster has designed that campus and this was um, there was no sign of the pandemic at that point of time but it okay. is an air cooled campus okay okay so uh-huh. it's something that you know there is a central courtyard and there is they've designed it in such a way that there is a natural air flow and you know all those things are there it's it's just been designed with sensitivity i think in india if you look at all our traditional buildings we had a lot of sensitivity towards all these issues some okay. down the line we lost the track and okay. uh, the pandemic i think has also given us an opportunity to go back and see what we you know we've left behind and mm. how you know we could be sustainable and how what are the measures like for instance we whenever we make a building um, we do the south and the west walls with uh, a cavity wall which is a rat trap bond wall okay so the minute you do that the air pockets itself as act as an insulator so it brings down the air conditioning loads tremendously and then so i think the times just call for sensitivity the issue that i have here is that a lot of multinational firms you know whom we work for they have their design mandate spelled out by you know their central think tank wherever it absolutely. is absolutely correct okay. correct and, you know so they the we we get a you know say a booklet of this is what needs to the be the red done. book kind of yeah. thing yeah 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 hmm. now see we need to analyze it at the local say level at with our own demographics you know going into it what are our issues and Completely. you know what works for them will not totally work for us so mm-hmm. that aspect of uh, thinking has to be there and then we need to you know uh, adapt all the solutions so the the data That's- thing Uh, we need it, to add to the data to make it uh, logical and sensible can't just take it so <laughs> do we get that flexibility or no prashant to move around that red book that you guys get into you get, we, we have good good architects here also rashmi they are much <laughs> much okay. more aware and much more okay. uh, uh, you know practical and they they understand all the nuances but the problem is a uh, lot of times uh, 
you know that yes uh, saying yes to the client takes over you know uh, i can totally <laughs> understand uh prashant i just wanted to understand so uh, being like uh, you know uh, anup uh, mentioned a point about how uh, the facility team holds in a lot of data a lot of resources as to how the space is uh, utilized occupied like you know what are the functions required etc uh, this but uh, i've spoken to a lot of uh, facility managers and uh, they say seldom at the architectural or the conceptual design stage is their inputs taken into consideration all right uh, and this is something for buildings that is being done in like bkc reliance office actually i am not even going to fudge words here reliance office had a major issue of glare and they are like architects so design karke chale jate hain their glass facades and the shiny buildings but the glare that comes in is what we have to deal with they i don't know obviously you mentioned the orientation to obviously the building simulation in itself goes into a lot of iteration before it's designed but uh, she mentioned that uh, there was so much uh, like glare that was coming in because of the glare the heating load was uh, like you know increasing the ac load was obviously put on to and double this this was there uh, there was another situation with the lnt in kalina i don't know if you know the lnt financial building all right now that particular building has a uh, eight uh, lift cores for a building of 12 floors or something like that all right and this was because of the permission permits that they vary they are like now they build the eight core lifts now the facility managers have to maintain those eight uh, this irrespective of what it is it's there it's situated so basically the they are complain this architects design and go and they never come back to see how the building fares do you all ever do that i just want to understand from your team do you all go back to your sites maybe a year later 12 year uh, uh, sorry uh, like you know 18 months later to see your mistakes to see what has happened how so, do you all go about architect architect the architects are uh, gods they uh, don't make mistakes i very mistake it is clearly the mistake of an architect if if there is a glare on the building it, it's totally the mistake of an architect it this this is basic planning principles how you plan the building in terms of the orientation of the building north south east west correct so if if, the, if this is a very big mistake and uh, you know we have to be with the facilities manager so that's one thing and uh, you know as you rightly said you know um, not just the edifice but we have seen that you know more and more architects everyone is becoming very conscious and very sensitive about you know okay. how, how we are doing the buildings how we are planning how we are mm-hmm. not just uh, you know not just orientation of building but you know there are so many technologies now where we are doing you know out of 20 architectural projects which are doing right now you know eight of them we are doing with radiant cooling okay okay which is like we are we are we are we are embedding chilled pipes into the slab okay there is okay. no there is no hvac there is no ahu we are okay. actually doing radiant cooling which is you know we are, uh, we, we have done some of them for infosys as well so we are okay. using new kind of technologies you know which which are you know almost not harmful at all because mm-hmm. we are not using any hvac so there is no issue of you know Uh, mm-hmm. having some filters which are you know going to cause some problems so mm-hmm. there are so many technologies in mep as well which are going mm-hmm. to you know help solve these problems okay so That's you know a, these are yeah, next steps which we on architecture go into and you know use these technologies in mep you okay. know and talking about the data which arna Ar- Ar- was rightly mentioning about you know <clears throat> there are two to three stages in which how these data works you know like you know there are some simple data you know where where we get apps and you know you can you can from those apps you can get to know if the meeting room is booked or you know at what time you can book these meeting rooms you know the the time slot availability and all you know Correct. no i would say only uh, you know maybe 3 to 5% of our clients you know they have gone for iot mm-hmm. okay, okay. Uh, wherein you know they, we have installed sensors wherein we we get data uh, of you know what is the usage of this meeting room you know okay uh, in, in this entire floor plan you know do what at, what you know what is the occupancy and does do we need to run the ac at that temperature so all this data is possible if you if we have iot okay? okay but that is you know very 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 less uh, number of percentage of clients are going for that so mm-hmm. you know that is very important but you mm-hmm. know interestingly i would like to share you know uh, since this pandemic what at least you know couple of uh, software companies which have reached to us you know in terms mm-hmm. of you know how covid 19 this pandemic is affecting uh how it has affected office design and uh, how mm-hmm. we can use the, their technology to plan better you know so uh, i Good. was able to you know they gave us couple of demos so you know nowadays there are softwares you know like you know safe distance app you know which which creates a 3d map of the office 
and you know Correct. pain points the position of the staff you know yeah. you get the density and you it helps you make you know decisions of you know how to use the spaces okay hmm. Uh, hmm. there are consulting firms you know already doing uh, research you know they, they do gps signals to geolocate their employees okay so you know they, their their hr department can know you know if if someone has a corona virus uh, they will know through their location of the employees that you know which all other okay. employees should be you know they should be told okay. that also should go need to go into isolation okay okay okay, okay. there are some softwares like disto which which help you you know you have to feed your layout plan into that software and you know it will actually uh, you know mark out the you know uh, 8 feet distance or a 10 feet distance to ensure you know how many people can op- occupy this uh, office you know that's amazing. one of our clients has using is uh, of course an mnc you know they are using facial recognition okay you know you don't want to touch things right in pandemic you don't want to touch things and you know correct uh, correct correct yeah because of the precaution so facial correct. recognition is one software which is used to Uh, you know ensures entry and security and stuff like that so uh, you know as it was always playing but again technology here is playing such an important role in okay. providing solutions in this pandemic i would say um, not just the remote work from home which we are able okay. to do and you know um, you sure. know i think this is one of the biggest thing being able to work from home and Correct. ensure okay. that you know uh, so many livelihoods are being you know taken care of so many people are working from home it's it's a great thing that technology has helped us huh. and uh, okay. even for further planning and you know taking care of you know further precautions if there are softwares okay. which can help help us to uh, you know okay. give better solutions okay okay that's actually in fact my next question was going to come up to uh, the technological aspects of it what are the new kind of uh, systems that are being integrated and you mentioned about disto and all these uh, this these are some really uh, pro head uh, what do you say uh, questions that are going so uh, okay so i think uh, we are already up above the one hour timeline and uh, we'll uh, wrap this up soon so maybe just as a last concluding factor just uh, it, if each one of y'all can say the top uh, three trends or like you know the top three technological innovations that y'all see will dominate uh, the near future to come for office spaces that's it any three uh, trends and technological innovations uh, like uh, prashant mentioned disto and all uh, but it just as in uh, like you know rapid fire question anna what do you um, think would be i think uh, the health and wellness is going to be the dominant kind of um, driving force for the future development whether it's okay. society or anything else that, all right But that's one yeah my my only point is health and wellness should not is it's no longer that you make your home secure and your office secure okay you know you need to collaborate with your stakeholders so correct as a citizen you need to collaborate with the civic bodies okay. as a employee you have to collaborate with your employer as a okay. occupier in it campus you need to collaborate with your landlord Okay. only then you can make your space secure sure you alone sure. cannot make it any more secure absolutely uh, so that's, mean, that's the most important thing that i feel okay uh, is going to drive drive development the, and design going forward meena you uh, you were saying yeah. something at the top uh, yeah so um, i think my takeaways from uh, the center situation obviously one is the top is the sustainability aspect of it that has to be i mean it ha- it is mandatory sustainability is just sensible design and that's the way we have to look at it okay. then of course uh, flexibility in layouts that uh, you don't make things too rigid and too you know fixed and regimented so okay. you know all our partitions and everything they have to be flexible all our designs have to be like that then okay. the most important thing is that we look at the health of the indoor spaces indoor. that we occupy absolutely um, look at how much fresh air is being taken in and what is indoor air quality and um, well, let's absolutely. you know look at that and uh, finally i can't say it enough let's also look at our workforce welfare strategies that we have on the construction sites uh, okay. because it's a very very different ball game together we can think sit here and think of 100 things to do and take forward but those That's are the true. guys who are actually working on the site if That's they work there nothing is going to be taken forward that's okay. true absolutely we need to streamline how they work and how we respond to those guys so that's sure shibani uh, your take on uh, the top trends that you think uh, would uh, be good so sustainability uh, smart solutions technology absolutely. embedded in homes embedded in office spaces embedded in interiors to make it smarter more efficient uh, okay. far more efficient 
use of energy okay okay uh prashant uh, to you i'm just going to come up to the final question would be the uh, top 3 technology systems that uh, you think uh, will be uh, dominant or would make a uh, major this like you mentioned the radiant cooling that is actually it's <clears throat> one of one really amazing uh, system i don't even i hadn't really uh, come across it uh, earlier but what do you think are some of the three technological fronts that will dominate the industry so you know as i mentioned uh, you know we feel that uh, at least i feel that iot is going to play a be a major factor iot is going to play a very important role going forward in terms of uh, not just data but you know how how we can ensure about uh, health and well being of employees you know are uh, tracking sure. employees their locations and everything absolutely uh, okay iot and yeah. uh, you know there are many sensors which uh, we, we are you know which we are trying to uh, you know get information about from our mep teams you know which can actually help design better mep solutions so uh-huh. i think that is going to be that is going to play a very important part okay. so yeah okay. these two are very important i think uh, in terms okay. of uh, you know how how we look at the future all right okay okay uh, so we'll uh, wrap up the session your ladies and gentlemen and thank you so much for your time taking out uh, and uh, helping with us it was really interesting we, and luckily i got in combination of some uh, really dynamic speakers here like adnab coming from the pmc background uh, prashant from an architectural the shibani coming more from the artistic and like you know the decor side of it and meena coming handling like you know the mid scale small scale also giving us that uh, input because there's so many of our audience members and like you know viewers in that particular segment too but uh, thank you so much it was a great mix and a great uh, session thank you so much for your this i'll definitely send you all the final recording of the video and as i mentioned let me just go through the recording in case if i need any visual help i'll definitely get back to you all in i could give you the two layouts that i was talking about perfect perfect yeah 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 the plan <laughs> plan that you mentioned about done done i will definitely get to that so anyway Trace, so we'll end the meeting session here thank you so much for your time uh, ladies and gentlemen sure. really thanks, thanks you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.